good afternoon. We're so pleased you could make yourself available to be here. Your Majesty. We won't waste time. Let the work begin. To begin, here is my favorite scene which inspired this first project. Yay. So, this is considered art. My parents did this in the 60s. <laughs> yes! They had an exhibition at Woodstock. And I guess you're trying to bring it back? Well, you know, this means homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Some moms help their kids with homework. We do this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 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 yes, I like it. <laughs> First, you will need some washable kids' paint. I did a range of greens and then a gold. You will need a canvas. I'm using a soft one, but if you want to use wood or plank, or, um, paper, anything works. Next, you will need some darts. I did soft darts because I'm using a soft canvas. You will also need some water balloons with a little spout that fills them. Optional is some newspaper to lay down in case paint gets anywhere, especially if you're doing it indoors. Depending how many paint colors you have, you have to have that many plastic bags. And last but not least, you'll also need a pair of scissors. First, you will open the plastic bag, and we're going to take our first color. I chose gold, and you're going to pour it in and be generous about it and put a good amount in the plastic bag. Close off the Ziploc bag once you have enough paint in there and try to get air bubbles out. It's not too necessary, but I just like having a flat plastic bag. Now you're going to repeat that step several times. If you want to mix colors, which is what I did, you can do that and put multiple colors of paint in a bag. And then once you close it off, what you can do is then mush it together with your hands and just knead it through the bag. And it's a nice you know, clean way of getting the paint colors the correct way you want. Once you have all your colors in the plastic bag, what you're going to do is take the first one and snip off a little corner, and that's how we're going to squeeze the paint into the balloons. It's similar to if you do frosting um, for baking. You're kind of using that, and you're going to pour it into the spout of the balloon. That's why we want to make sure when we get a, um, the water balloons that you have the little spout with it. What you're going to do is kind of knead the paint into the balloon. It's much easier than trying to pour in the paint directly into the balloon opening. The spout just makes it a little more easier. It's kind of like a funnel. It was hard to show blowing up the balloon. I kept the balloon on the spout and blew into it, and that was easier. And then you just take it off without releasing air and tying the balloon off. Now repeat that step several times with however many colors. I did four balloons of each color. Again, pour it into the spout, knead the paint into the balloon, put as much paint as you want. I was on the lighter side, so I have a more splattery look than the heavy dripping if you put more paint into the balloon. And again, you're going to blow into that spout, and that's how you're going to get the balloon to blow up. And then you'll take it off the spout and then tie the balloon off. In the end, you should have an array of colors all blown up. Make sure you tie it tight so no air releases. Nail the canvas to a tree or put it on an easel and then tape the balloons onto the canvas. Put newspaper down at the bottom to protect paint getting on your driveway or anything. I highly recommend doing it outside. And then have fun. My brother helped me with this project, and it was a good way to release stress. It does take some time if you don't have as many balloons, but I highly recommend it. It's very cool, and if you do washable paint, it's much easier to clean up. This 
is more fun than princess lessons. <laughs> Here is the finished result. You will have holes if you use a soft canvas, but I particularly like the holes. It kind of gives it character. If you don't, you can put white paper behind it or use wood or a harder surface. I've also seen painting the canvas black first and then splattering, which is cool too. Get from you. I'm not an idiot. So I know that something's going on that you're not telling me. Friends tell. So you know what? Here is your friendship charm. I'm taking it off and it's going in the dirt. Don't do that, okay? Just... <clears throat> All right, just wait. Why? I will tell you the truth, but you're going to think it's really stupid and you're going to freak. Try me. and I, I don't know what else there is to say. Will you come on my cable show? No, I can't. This is a royal secret, okay? You can't tell anyone. Not even Whether you're revealing a royal secret or not, you should always be sporting an awesome charm bracelet. First, do you need charms? Obviously, I have four here that I'll talk about later that relate to the movie, but you can do whatever you want. Next, you need some jumper rings. I have them matching in a silver tone to my charms. You will also need some type of clasp. I did some magnet ones, but if you want to do a cool clip-in one, whatever, anything works. Of course, you'll need a chain to hold all these charms together. I just did a simple silver one. Tool-wise, you'll need a clipper to open up the chain and also some tweezers. To start off, measure out a length of chain that fits around your wrist. So just go around. I did a loose fit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, what I like to do is just check that I can fit in a finger through. That's usually the looseness I like for a bracelet. Hold on to the length of the chain you want and then you're going to take your clippers and break the chain. So just go in there, it can be a little tricky, just kind of wiggle the chain until the little ring breaks open. Make sure that you will take out the broken chain because sometimes it will stick to the bracelet chain and you don't want to have an open broken ring. Before you put on your charms, count each segment of the chain. You can also use a tweezer to count them if that's easier. Um, you want to evenly displace your charms. Once you've counted, make sure to lay out your charms so you know what order you want them to be in. Take your first charm and your two tweezers and open up that ring. If it doesn't come with a ring, you can also use a jumper ring. Once that little ring is open, you're going to carefully put on the chain on the loop that you counted evenly to disperse it. So this was the 20th chain for me. And then close that ring back up with the tweezers. Make sure to kind of pinch it so it's really closed. Again, take a charm. Open up the ring. If the tweezers are getting annoying, you can also just use your fingers. Just be careful. Um, make sure you really do open it up a nice bit so that you can put the chain on. Um, and then count how many chains you need. So for me, this was 19 little chains from the second charm. And then close that back up. You want to make sure that your charms are facing the same way when you are putting the next one on. After that, and you've put all your four chains in, it's time to put the clasp on, and it's a similar process as the charms. You're going to open up a jumper ring, same technique as before with the two tweezers or your fingers. Open that up. Once you've got it nicely opened, take one half of the clasp and put that on there. Mine's magnet so it can stick to it, which is fine. And then you're going to take your chain and at the end loop that last little chain and close it up so that now the clasp is connected to your charm bracelet. 
Now you're going to do that again by opening up another jumper ring and putting the other half of that clasp onto the charm bracelet. Again, if the tweezers are getting annoying, you can use your hands in this process too. So here's the finished product of my charm bracelet. Now I'm going to explain the charms related to the Princess Diaries. So the first one is a horse because uh, Princess Mia's Mustang is her baby, so I thought that would be a good one. And then after the horse, I have a flip-flop for that foot-popping kiss, um, which was important to Mia for her first kiss. And then next one, I have a kitty, obviously, for Fat Louie, her kitty. That is hilarious and is probably one of my favorite characters in the movie. And then after Fat Louie, I have a tiara, obviously, Princess, Princess Diaries. But I also have a rose in there, which was an important part of the garden and the Genovia embassy. It's a present for your 16th birthday from your father. Of course, we're going to have a personalized diary for a Princess Diaries DIY. You will need a notebook. I just have this soft notebook lying around my house so I want to use. Then you'll need a pair of scissors, some Mod Podge glue, a paintbrush, and then a printed out picture. I chose pears because Genovian pears. The famous Genovian pear and cheese dessert. What else? First, take your image and cut it out. Now, take your first one, so I have the open pear on the first side and place it on the notebook and take your paintbrush and paint the Mod Podge glue on top of it, kind of like a decoupage on this notebook to personalize it. Don't be afraid to put a lot of glue on there. Be smooth and gentle when you're on the piece of paper, but you definitely want to coat it in a nice heavy glue. You're going to want this side of the notebook to dry overnight once you finish gluing down the picture. So, Mr. Prime Minister, how would you say the pear market is doing in Genovia? The Genovian pear market is blossoming, <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun. Once the front half is dry, glue down the other picture on the back of the notebook. Once you have both sides dry, don't forget to do what my favorite part is of the new journal, is to write my name in the front page. This one has a cute little, if lost, please report back to this person. So I'm just going to quickly write down my name, just so I really have personalized this journal. So that's it. I would recommend, if you do have a soft journal, spray mount the pictures first. I was noticing they were starting to peel up because they weren't sticky on the bottom. So I recommend that if you do have a soft journal. If it's a hard case, then you should be fine just decoupaging the picture in the front. Waving even more gently, Hello. you sort of say, thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you for being here. I'm thank sorry, ma'am. I must pick up the Prime Minister. Oh, oh. oh well. Thank, thank you for being here today. today.